Hello, my name is Dr. Revati Raj. I'm a pediatric hematologist and oncologist working at the Apollo Cancer Center in uh, Chennai. We are a premier transplant center and uh, today I'm here to talk to you about what is bone marrow transplantation. So what used to be called as bone marrow transplantation, we now call it blood and marrow transplantation or hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. A lot of people find this whole concept very complicated and when children are referred to us for transplant, parents are anxious, they are worried because they think that this is a major surgery or operation. So first of all, let me tell you that this is a medical procedure and there is no surgical uh, part involved. So let me take you through the steps of what is blood and marrow transplantation. So India is a vast country and uh, we started uh, with about three to four transplant centers in uh, the late 80s. Now we have close to 100 transplant centers in the country and uh, every year there are more and more new transplant centers but experience for uh, tre treating children with blood disorders and blood cancers especially in this niche area is improving every day. So what happens when a child is referred to us for blood and marrow transplantation? The first step is who needs a transplantation. So our blood has two components, the cells which are the red cells, white cells and platelets and the plasma which is the white or yellow part of the blood. So if there are problems with the cellular part, which is red cells or white cells or platelets, then we can cure them using a blood and marrow transplantation or BMT. So the common conditions for which we transplant children, one is um, loss of the entire bone marrow, which is called aplastic anemia or severe aplastic anemia and uh, red cell disorders like thalassemia major and sickle cell anemia. A lot of you may not be aware, but our country is now the thalassemia capital of the world. There are more than 10,000 new babies born with thalassemia major in our country and this is very unfortunate and this is a condition we can prevent with just enough awareness and pre-pregnancy screening and counselling. White cell disorders are many. One is called primary immune deficiency where the child is born with defective white blood cells. So the conditions such as severe combined immune deficiency, chronic granulomatous disease, so these are white cell disorders for which we offer BMT. Blood cancers are a huge part of the transplant service that we offer. Blood cancers can be acute myeloid leukemia or lymphoblastic leukemia or chronic myeloid leukemia. Majority of the children we try to cure using chemotherapy but there will be a small group where the cancer has recurred after chemotherapy which is called relapsed ALL or relapsed AML or chronic myeloid leukemia CML which is not responding to chemotherapy tablets like imatinib or desatinib. So uh, there are also newer indications that we do transplant for. These are called monocytic disorders and one of them is called HLH where there is a lot of angry macrophages in the child's body and there is continuous fever or storage disorders such as mucopolysaccharidosis, Hurler syndrome. So these previously used to be practically incurable diseases and now we have hope for these children to help cure them using these procedures. So what happens when a child is referred to us for transplant? The principle of transplanting all of these children are, is the same. There are seven steps in transplantation. So the first step, we have a patient and we have a donor. So we need a healthy patient. Healthy means a patient who's fit enough to proceed with the transplant and who has the indication to have the transplant. So take for example, a child who has a leukemia or a blood cancer. We need for their blood cancer to be in remission. That means as far as we can see, there shouldn't be any leukemia cells left behind in the bone marrow because the whole transplant process is also like gardening. You need healthy soil, you need healthy seeds.
so the child's heart liver lungs all organs should be intact during transplantation so we check that the child is ready for transplant so okay we have a patient who's fit and well to proceed with the transplant and who's for whom it's indicated next we need a healthy donor who can donate these blood stem cells for their brother or sister or their child so for this the basis of transplantation is a test called hla typing hla stands for human leukocyte antigen it is basically a passport which says this is me i will accept myself this is you i will not accept so this is our whole immune system in our body which decides what is accepted and what is not accepted so hla typing can be done using a blood test or it can be used uh, done by doing just a, a simple buccal swab or uh, just testing the cheek cells so uh, hla typing we uh, inherit from both our parents 50% hla we get from our mother and 50% from our father so the chance that me and my brother will match completely with the hla is only about 30% so what do we do for the other 70% for whom a transplant is indicated? Thankfully, there are a lot of generous people in this world. There are registries within India and abroad whereby more than 30 million people are registered as a stem cell donor. And we can put in the HLA typing of the patient, see where in the world there is a fully matched donor. So we have identified the patient, we have identified the donor, the next step is to admit the patient and give them high doses of chemotherapy or radiotherapy so that all their blood stem cells will dissolve and come out in the urine. So this part is called conditioning. Normally conditioning lasts for about one week. So in this one week, the child goes through difficult time because we need to use pretty heavy doses of uh, chemotherapy or radiotherapy in order to eliminate their bone marrow stem cells. Only if their stem cells are eliminated and if their immune system is low can they accept new stem cells. So we use drugs like uh, triosulfan, busulfan, fludarabine or whole body radiotherapy and huge amounts of advances have happened in this field also so we're able to support the children quite well right from newborn period to anyone close to 65 years and uh, the once this one week is over their blood cells come down to zero so on the eighth day we take the stem cells from the donor and infuse it into the child so it's a very simple procedure most parents are surprised that the transplant is only like a blood transfusion done by our unit nurses the donor on the day of donation can donate the stem cells in uh, uh, two different ways so our bone marrow cells can be harvested in the operation theater, the donor is given full general anesthesia and from the hip bone, we can take uh, small amounts of blood uh, and this can be used as stem cell donation. So we count the number of stem cells using a, a test called CD34. We need at least 5 million cells per kg body weight of the patient. The other advance in this field is peripheral blood stem cell donation. It's a simple outpatient office procedure where the donor has four days injections. Some of their blood stem cells come into the peripheral blood and uh, the bone marrow cells are in the peripheral blood and we have uh, technology whereby we can collect these cells like a blood donation and uh, these cells are then infused into the patient they go into the patient and settle into the bone marrow spaces and start making new blood only after two weeks so these two weeks we have to look after a child who practically has zero blood who's received high doses of chemotherapy or radiotherapy so there's bound to be mouth ulcers vomiting loose stools so we need to provide actual proper supportive care we need infection control team and a whole load of nursing team 
and uh, without teamwork we cannot get through this whole procedure so it's not a one man show and we need trained nursing pediatric icu staff blood bank microbiology housekeeping a lot of effort is involved in getting through the two weeks after two weeks the blood cells start to improve and then we test the blood and uh, it's a beautiful situation where all the blood cells are now belonging to that of the donor so that is called chimerism donor chimerism we want it to be 100% donor so then uh, the child is then ready for discharge so the total hospitalization is anywhere between 3 to 4 weeks now we have a new person's blood in our body how are we going to deal with them so there are new stem cells in the child's body so the child should not reject these stem cells or the new stem cells should not reject the child when the new stem cells reject the child that's called graft versus host disease which can result in uh, uncontrolled diarrhea skin rash or liver problems so we keep the immune system down by giving medications like cyclosporin and tacrolimus for anywhere between 6 months to 1 year in 6 months to 1 year both the new stem cells and the body accept each other then the child is given all their vaccines that they received as a baby and then their immune system is back to normal and they can lead a life like anyone else what is life after bone marrow transplant so if all stages go well step by step the children do really well so some of our post transplant uh, kids are now doctors engineers and leading a full life so uh, life of an after transplant can be really optimal and that is what we aim to give for every individual child um, when we start the transplant so but they do need follow up they need their vaccinations they need to check their height and weight and growth and puberty and also all the hormonal assays and for the heart and liver function so this is all called long term follow up because we've used heavy doses of chemotherapy in a growing child fully matched sibling or an unrelated donor we are now using haploidentical or half match transplant and in this technology we use a half match parent or a brother or sister to do the transplant and the, this advance has made a huge difference to offering a cure to patients in my own lifetime the other uh, uh, aspect is long term follow up especially with hormone and endocrine they will need multidisciplinary follow up so uh, transplantation the way i look at it will uh, be the hope for a lot of our children in future maybe we will have gene therapy in our country which is also a form of transplant we are going to use missing genes to be sent into the child's body but they will have to go through the same process of transplant with their own stem cells so hopefully we'll have more of these uh, children coming to us and rather than have a lifetime of suffering they're able to get one off chance of cure to lead a normal healthy life thank you